All right, so today we're here at the world headquarters for Kafaru International. And we're here with Corey Arola, and Corey is going to kind of walk us through how to make the proper gear selection, pack selection, uh, if you're a first time hunter. And so you stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've mentioned in the last couple of videos that in September I'll be making my first backcountry elk hunt. And when you start looking at the gear and the packs and all the different things that you need to start outfitting for that, uh, that trip, it, it can get really intimidating for even an experienced hunter like me in the state of Texas, I've never really ventured out west. And so Corey's going to simplify things for us and kind of tell us some of the things that we need to look for uh, when selecting a pack and some other gear. Um, so Corey, just, first of all, just to get started, uh, how long have you been with Kafaru? I've been here just over a year. Okay, so a person like me, and a lot of our viewers are probably doing that, um, what, what are some of the things that we need to consider when we're selecting pack? You know, um, we're used to driving our pickup trucks and you know, unloading our gear at our hunting location, uh, especially there in, in Texas. So when we're outfitting for a hunt like this, what are some of the considerations that we need to, as far as selecting the right pack, selecting the size, those kind of things? So when you come out west, you're doing a combination of hunting and backpacking. Right. The thing that differentiates it from just backpacking is you're coming out much heavier. Typically when you just go on a backpacking trip, you're going in with your 55, 60 pounds of gear, mm -hmm. and you're coming out lighter because you ate your food. The goal with backpack hunting is to come out with meat. Right. So you're going in with 55, 60 pounds a year, but you're com going to come out with a couple loads of 80, 100, 120 pounds. So you need a backpack that can stand up to that as well as expand to take that extra load. Um, our backpacks are designed with the thought process, thought process of you're going in with your kit, all your camping gear, your hunting gear, and then you're going to be coming out with meat on top of it. Now when you get to camp and drop it off, you want a backpack that compresses down into day pack mode and then expands back out. So all of our packs here are designed to go in with your gear, compress down, expand out, get everything out. And the format and layout of the pack is to be able to hunt with it when it's full and hunt with it when it's compressed. Knowing that I was going to be doing a hunt for, for quite some time, I didn't, I didn't know exactly when, but over the last couple of years I've kind of been doing some research. And of course on TexasBillHunter.com there's always people coming out west and so I kind of pay attention to those. And one of the things that I've noticed just in, in kind of lurking or watching, it seems like there, um, there are a few packs that kind of stand out above the rest when you're talking about the upper echelon, the premium packs. Kind of the three that come to mind are off the top of my head that I've seen are, are Kafaru, Exo Mountain Gear, and, uh, and Stone Glacier. And all of those packs are kind of in the same price range. But just from a general perspective, what are some of the things that differentiate the truly upper level packs like Kafaro and the ones I mentioned from the but more budget pack. What are some of the considerations that people need to think about before they just go off and, and buy a, a pack off the wall or off the internet? What you're getting when you spend this amount of money on a pack is a pack that fits your body type. We have multiple frame sizes, multiple belt sizes, and different stay options. So you can really fine tune the fit to your body. What that does is it allows you to best carry the weight. So one thing that is unique about Kafaro is we build our packs very durable and we don't chase a number on a scale to say, hey, this is this amount of pounds and that's going to allow you to hike further and deeper. We're going to say this is what works best, this is what's functional. And because of that and that better fit and that better design, when you put 100 pounds on your back, it's not gonna feel like 100 pounds. And that's what's gonna allow you to go further and deeper. Obviously the durability of the pack itself, but also when you're talking about the, the, the external frame and the suspension system can make a huge difference as well, is that correct? Yeah, so Our, we have multiple stay profiles right. as a couple different stay materials, um, composite and aluminum. Aluminum, it's heavier, but it does allow you to custom bend the back profile so if you have a very curvy or a very weird shaped back, you can really fine tune that fit. Uh, we have a lot of people that they've tried every brand, they've tried our packs with composite stays, 
and in communicating with them and trying to get that perfect fit, we end up turning on them onto aluminum, which is a little heavier than our composite stay. But when they get that bend to fit their lumbar area, and our belt has great curvature compared to all the other brands out there. When you get it to hug your hips and that curvature to match your lumbar perfectly, it's a night and day difference when you load up that pack with heavier. And getting back to our original question of, you know, the upper level packs are going to be more of a custom fit, custom tailored to the hunter. Yeah, um, yeah, for, very much. Size for their body type for that kind of thing. Correct. Yeah, adjusting shoulder straps individually, adjusting waist belt, just that that modularity, being able to really fine tune that fit is going to make a difference. Okay, and kind of along the same lines, um, the, the three packs that I mentioned, which again are the ones that kind of stand out. What are some of the things that differentiate that you, that you feel like differentiate Kafaru from the other, you know, couple of packs that are also considered upper echelon? The, the modularity uh, really sets us apart. Is your selecting your frame we have four different frames right now it's going to be reduced to three uh, eventually uh, the tactical hunting light and ultra light light's going to be replacing hunting uh, so you're picking the frame that best suits your needs and fine-tuning that to your fit now all of our packs go onto that frame so you get your frame that fits best for you and then you pick your pack that best fits your needs right. and if you have multiple packs or you're doing different kinds of hunts um, your frame's always gonna carry the weight the same. And you just put your pack on there based on how you wanna pack and access your gear, size you need, what you're carrying, et cetera. Uh, the waist belt really sets us apart from everyone else. That The big lumbar pad and the curvature in the waist belt, the way it sits on your hips is like, I've, I've never experienced a more comfortable belt using other brands before I eventually started using the bar. Yeah, so just from a consumer perspective and something, of course, you know, as the owner, of a web form, texasbowhunter.com, and having done a little bit of study, I, I'll tell you one thing from my standpoint that has really s stood out is um, just the, the support, the customer support. Um, you know, reading on the forums, and I, I actually witnessed it here today, when I walked in this morning as we were waiting to film, uh, a gentleman walked in from Wisconsin, I believe, and had, had a little... I don't know what his issue yeah, some, was. some stitching coming undone on Yeah, the, so he had a little backpack. bit of stitching, and I saw Corey take it upstairs, took it to the sew room, I'm assuming brought it back down and said, hey, we just, we ran a couple extra stitches in it, you know, set him on his way, perfectly happy. So that level of, of service is, is certainly hard to find. Um, talk to me a little bit about, and this is important for a lot of our viewers as well, talk to me a little bit about the Made in the USA thing. So it, it's great to have everything made in the USA uh, for multiple reasons. I mean, you can look at that economically. Right. Um, but just the quality of it. We know everything is up to, we provide a, a lifetime warranty, lifetime manufacturing warranty on the products. And our, our slogan is Rhino Tough. We want it to be completely bomb proof. Right. We don't want you to be in the back country and worry about a zipper or a buckle or a strap breaking. So with everything made in the USA, it can live up to those standards where we don't have to worry about any failures. Because gear, gear failures, depending on your situation, can be life or death in, yeah, certain, right. yeah, in, in certain situations. So I'll tell you another thing that, in my mind, has, that makes Caparo stand out, and from again, from a consumer standpoint, and, and just being somebody that's doing some research and trying to figure out what gear I need, is just the knowledge and the experience. So, you know, obviously, Aaron is a big presence on social media, um, you know, and, and, and of course, through, through the Caparo cast, and he's on Gritty Bowman all the time with, with Brian. And so the, the level of knowledge that that they're able to share, and not just in terms of pack, and not just in terms of you know gear selection and that kind of thing, but also nutrition and fitness and, and just kind of the whole thing. To me, that's just a, that's, that's invaluable. But one of the things that has been tough for me over the, um, you know, it, it initially especially, is trying to come up with what size pack. So, what are your recommendations for a guy doing a three-day hunt, five-day hunt, seven-day hunt? Is that pretty much how you determine kind of your initial start of where you're going to... Yeah, for the most part, we get your length of trip and figure out your cubic inches based on that. But a factor that a lot of people don't realize is volume of gear. If you're new to the game and you have, I use cheaper, relatively of course, but typically cheaper gear is less compressible. So if you're new to the game and you don't have lightweight, ultralight yeah, gear, you're going to need a larger bag for a shorter yeah, trip just because of the volume issue. 
Um, so typically speaking, we'd be looking for the three to four thousand cubic inch bag as your three to four day pack, your weekender pack. We're looking around 6,000 cubic inches for your five to seven day pack, okay. and then 7,000 plus for 10 to 14 days. And you all offer packs that are everywhere from what's, what's the smallest, 1,100? Yeah, we, yeah we, we, we have little 10, everyday plus. carry packs and lids that double as day packs up to a 8,000 cubic inch pack for expedition style. What also sets Kafaro apart is the modularity. All of our bags have the ability to attach external pockets, right. lids, and pouches to it. So when you're getting that, um, we'll jump to the Woodsman as yeah. an example here. It's a 3,400 cubic inch pack with the fold over top here. If you extend the top up and call it a snow collar now and run a lid over it, you're at 4,000 cubic inches with an 1,000 cubic inch lid over it. So all of a sudden you can get five or six days out of your smaller pack okay. if you're smart about packing. But you can help somebody yeah, we, if, if they talk to you, if they call you, um, come into the, to the store, it's, that's something that you can walk through. So, okay, well, kind of tell me what year you have you know, and, and kind of point them in the right direction. And, and that's the beauty of a company like this where you have Frank, Aaron, myself, who grew up hunting, who yep. started with cheap gear, progressed to better gear, who are carrying camera gear around, is that we've been at all these different levels and we've seen what space it takes. So when you make the phone call or send the email in, and you're like, hey, this is my trip link, this is my gear, this is my idea of how it's gonna work, we can have that conversation with you and steer you in the right direction of saying, this is what's probably gonna fit your needs best, this is the amount of space we think you need, or this is the kind of pack you think you need, but we're gonna tell you that's yeah. not our recommendation, it's not going to be where we steer you to. Well, and, and along those lines, from my standpoint, um, you know, just looking online and doing the research, I felt like I wanted one pack. And after talking to Aaron on the phone on Tuesday before I came up um, and explaining to him the camera gear that I was bringing and that kind of thing, he actually steered me in another direction. So, uh, and then he suggested that since I was going to be in town anyway, come by, check out a few of the packs pick the one that I thought looked the best, felt the best, that kind of thing. So we're gonna do that after this. Just a couple other quick things and I'll let you go, Corey. We'll, we'll see about getting a getting, uh, pack on order for me. Um, you can't have that today, right? No, okay, no so. we got a lead time on all our products. Uh, with made to order products, uh, it takes about two to three weeks, depending on what you order, for us to get it sewn, built, assembled, and shipped out to you or ready for pickup. That's all right. I got some Walmart, Walmart sacks for my uh, weekend scouting trip that I'm going on later this afternoon. So, um, Getting back to fitting of the suspension and the frame, um, that can be a little bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. One of the intimidating things on you know, what measurements do you need, how do you go about measuring those, um, how do you determine if you need the 22, 24, 26 inch frame height? Um, so talk yeah. to me about some of so, those things. So frame height completely depends on your torso length. Mm -hmm. uh, torso length is measured from your iliac crest to your C7 vertebrae, okay. which is confusing for most people, yeah. which is why on our website we ask for your height and your inseam. Okay. Because everyone knows their height, and if you buy pants, you can figure out your inseam, it's the second number on the label. Okay. So by a customer telling us the height and the inseam, we can figure out if they have a long or a short torso and steer them in the correct direction direction for getting the torso height. Um, you're basically looking for a 45 degree angle from your load lifter, so from the top of your shoulder to the top of the frame. It's a scenario where bigger is not better. Right. Just because you want to carry more weight doesn't mean a 26 inch frame is going to be the best bet for you if you have a shorter torso. You're going to be able to carry more weight with the torso that fits you correctly. Right. So with your height and your inseam, we figure out your torso height, go from there, you use your waist measurement to figure out your waist belt, and then you're pretty much set. We do ask for your weight because that's how we guess at where we're going to set your shoulder straps for. We of course can't fine tune that without having the person in front of us, so we guess and ship it out. We have a great video on our website about adjusting the frame to fit you, so you can play with it and fine tune your shoulder straps. The shoulder straps adjust independently. Most people, their dominant shoulder is larger, so you'll end up with that shoulder strap being a little bit longer comparatively. Also, as Corey mentioned, they've got some great videos both on YouTube and, and on the Kafaru website. Um, I've watched several of those and talking about you know, a lot of the things that we're going over here today. So if you haven't done that already, be sure to go over to Kafaru, check out their website, check out 
um, all the information that they have there in the videos. They have some, some really good videos. Aaron does a great job of those. And again, that's part of the knowledge that can help you make the decisions. All right, so Corey, in addition to the packs, and I appreciate all the information on that, what are some other what are some other gear that you carry here at Kafari? What we're also really well known for is our tarps and teepees. We make floorless shelters that are extremely lightweight. So you're getting a lot of floor space inside of a relatively large shelter for minimal weight. And you get to pair that with our wood burning stoves. Yep. We have titanium and stainless steel stoves that are completely packable. You can press them down, put them in your pack with the shelter so you can get into the back country and you have heat to keep you warm in the later seasons as well as dry out gear and wet weather. And that is really a game changer when you can be on a seven day hunt, get wet on day yeah. two, and dry out all of your equipment. Do you have anything new that you're working on for this year? For, we're we're we always have? working on improving all of our products. We do listen to customer feedback, no matter what forum you post it on, Rock Slide, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we're always looking to improve everything we can. TexasBonner.com? <laughs> yeah, we're always looking to improve everything that we can, and we're always out testing. We come up with a new design, take it out, try it out, modify it a little bit, try it out again. So, yes, we're always working on something. Hopefully they'll let you spend some time in the field doing some testing as well. So, obviously, if you have an opportunity like I did, if you're in the Denver area and have an opportunity to come by, they can come by to the showroom here. You've got all the packs here. Yeah. Um, so, they, what are your hours, Monday the, through Friday? The showroom's open Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Okay. And you can come see the packs, the frames, the accessories. We have one shelter set up. and. Well, but, get, get you figured out. Yeah, but if, you, if, you, if you're not fortunate enough, you know, I know a lot of people are back east and down south and in Texas, and so not, not everybody's going to be able to come in before the season. But um, call these guys. You, 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 they can call you on the phone. They can send you a message through the, the website. Yeah, pretty much any avenue that says Kafaro on it, you can get a hold of us. Phone, email, Instagram, Facebook. We're all on it constantly, so we'll get back to you. Yes, so it doesn't have to be an intimidating process. These guys are, are very knowledgeable, very helpful. They, they love to see people succeed. Anyway, appreciate you joining us. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments section below. Uh, post them over on texaswillhunter.com. Uh, as always, appreciate you joining us. I'm getting ready to head out for a three-day pack. We're going to do some uh, some hiking and some scouting, and so uh, I'll be reviewing some gear while I'm there. So again, appreciate you joining us, and as always, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.